Welcome to episode one of a new series on DIY equipment for home chemistry labs, which is designing and making a lab scissor jack. A scissor jack being very useful in commonly performed procedures such as distillations, greatly assisting in setup convenience and safety. There is both a 3D printed version, and for those without access to a 3D printer, a version made from wood, which simply requires a handsaw and drill. The wooden version enables a very robust lab jack, capable of safely supporting tens of kilograms, but which also truly does enable a DIY scissor jack for just a few dollars, without the hidden need of hundreds of dollars or more in tools. As I said, this is the first in a series documenting the design and making of various homemade lab equipment. A number of items have already been completed, such as retort stands, boss heads and clamps, both 3D printed and wooden versions, a digital thermometer with up to eight simultaneous sensors, Bluetooth control and recording via an Android phone app, and a digital balance made from readily available and inexpensive parts. These episodes will be uploaded over the coming weeks, so make sure to subscribe to be notified when they become available. Other planned DIY equipment include a fume cupboard, an essential safety item, a magnetic stirrer from salvage parts from a broken desktop computer and discarded washing machine, a temperature controlled incubator for microbiological experiments, a melting point apparatus to help identify synthesized chemicals, and continuing the theme of quantification, a DIY spectrophotometer for colorimetry and spectrometry. Before getting into the details of the scissor jack, the obligatory self-promotion. Starting with the 3D printed version of the scissor jack, I will briefly go through the Fusion 360 design, then the 3D printing and settings used, and finally the assembly of the parts. A further section details the wooden version, which both shows how to make a functional version without needing a relatively expensive 3D printer, but which is also capable of handling a load of many kilograms. A scissor jack works by using a lead screw to either draw together or push apart opposing cross scissor arms, which increases or lowers the height of the attached platform. Ganging together multiple scissor arms allows increasing the effective height without needing to increase the length of the scissor arms, and hence the footprint of the scissor jack. I wanted to be able to reach a minimum height of approximately 20 centimeters, which is the height of my heating mantle, but also keep the footprint of the lab jack to about the diameter of a one liter flask to minimize bench surface area used. Due to my 3D printer, I am also limited to about 20cm linear length of any components to be made. Finally, while not really expecting to use the lab jack with containers much above room temperature, it would be good to have the option if needed, which means a solid PLA or even ABS 3D material for the support platform is probably not recommended. This is why I used a ceramic tile I had on hand as the support platform. This saves some cost and time in the 3D printing gives a robust surface with temperature, and also, as a bonus, it will withstand spillages from various solvents, acids, etc., and if it gets damaged, it can be replaced. The ceramic tiles I had on hand, left over from a bathroom refurbishment, were 15 centimeters square. The 15 centimeters also meant only two sets of scissor arms were required to give a total possible height of 25 centimeters when fully extended, while still staying within half the base width for stability. The lead screw is simply 6mm threaded rod with the associated nuts. Only a central lead screw is really required as a minimum, but due to the flex in the plastic parts and joints, dual lead screws gave a smoother, more robust action, and also gave me an excuse to play with 3D printed gears, which also give the benefit of quicker height adjustment. So that all led to this final design here in Fusion 360. Before moving on to the 3D printing, there is another benefit of using a ceramic tile or similar for the platform. Fusion 360 enables load and stress simulations to be performed using the physical characteristics of the various materials from which the final item will be made to show how the design is likely to perform. And this showed that if the support platform of the lab jack was 3D printed in PLA, it will likely sag and fail by bending inwards. While the simulation cannot really be used to usefully quantitate likely safe load weight etc, because the simulation doesn't take into account the 3D printed layer lines, 
how the 3D printed material is formed. It assumes solid materials. It does usefully show likely failure points in the design, and hence the extra benefit of the ceramic tile and giving overall rigidity, but also that the extra material at the joints of the scissor arms would be of benefit in distributing applied load rather than being placed elsewhere. Note the truss type design of the scissor arms, which more effectively uses the 3D printed plastic material to support and distribute the load. The 3D printing itself is straightforward, with no printing supports necessary. I use PLA at a temperature of 205 degrees Celsius, a bed temperature of 50 Celsius, with a 0.25mm layer height and a 0.4mm nozzle on an Anycubic i3 Mega. The scissor arms were printed with 100% infill, while the other components had 5% infill. The SDL files are available on my website for anybody interested, and if you would like any further details, let me know in the comments. Just quickly before we get into the assembly, this is the hardware list of parts needed, which is also listed in the video description. So once you have all the various 3D printed parts completed, the only thing I didn't print were the bottom rollers, which I salvaged from an old printer teardown, and the hardware parts, the hex bolts, nuts and 6mm threaded rod. You start the assembly with the base and the first set of scissor arms, which are connected by a hex bolt and nut. And then this first pair is attached to the base with another hex bolt. The other side of the bottom of the scissor arm is now attached to the base with a hex bolt, together with a roller, which completes the first pair. Since the picture is a thousand words, a video should be even more so, so I'll stop talking now, and leave the video to show the rest of the assembly. Happy to answer any questions in the comments if something is not clear.
The version of the lab jack made from wood was for two reasons. Firstly, the wooden version simply requires a handsaw and drill, which means you can really make a DIY scissor jack for just a few dollars, without the hidden cost of hundreds of dollars or more in tools. And secondly, I wanted a larger version that would be very robust, capable of safely supporting potentially tens of kilograms, as it would be both very convenient to be able to lower the heating mantle to remove a flask, without needing to remove attached distillation equipment for example. And also, if the contents of a flask were foaming or excessively bumping etc, lowering the heating mantle and rapidly removing the heat source entirely, rather than just turning off the heat, which leaves residual heat going into the flask from the heating mantle, could save the contents of the flask and also gives greater safety options. The aim was to give a range of height adjustment of about 10 centimeters to allow removing one litre flasks in my heating mantle when attached to a condenser for example, and to use 18 by 18 millimeter standard stock hardwood available from my local hardware shop. The design was done in Fusion 360 which allows generating dimension drawings from which you can work out your cut list etc. The hardware required and cut list is shown. A total of about 2.5 meters of stock 18 by 18 millimeter is needed, which comes in standard lengths of 2.8 meters, so this worked out nice. The construction of the wooden lab jack starts with cutting the various pieces required to size. I have a crosscut saw which makes things a little easier, but a handsaw would obviously do the job if you don't have access to power tools. Next is to measure and mark up the various pieces for drilling of the various necessary holes and slots. And then onto the actual drilling. I use the drill press, but this could be done with a hand drill, you just need to take some extra care. Before going any further, I did a dry test run of the assembly of the scissor jack, just using some sticky tape to temporarily hold the parts together. While this is not that necessary, it's good to make sure that all the parts are correct and double check to catch any mistakes before the final gluing up stage. Ok with that out of the way, on to the final assembly. The actual assembly is relatively straightforward, I use wood glue and wood screws to hold the various parts together, which means you don't need to clamp and wait for the wood glue to dry while doing the assembly, and the screws give some extra robustness to the final item. The two cross beams which hold the lead screw made from the threaded rod are attached to the cross scissor arms using timber screws. The screws both act as retainers and also axles to enable some rotation of the cross beams, which is necessary as the vertical face of the cross beams changes angle with respect to the cross scissor arms as the scissor arms are raised or lowered. So this means tighten these screws to ensure that the side faces of the cross beams are a snug fit with the scissor arms, but not so tight that the cross beams cannot move. The next step is inserting the lead screw. I made a wooden knob, but my lack of skill gave a pretty crappy outcome, so I made a more aesthetic one by 3D printing. The lead screw was simply made from a 200mm long piece of 6mm threaded rod. Into one of the cross beams I cut a slot to tightly fit a 6M hex nut, into which the threaded rod will run. This will form the nut of the lead screw. It is important that the 6M hex nut in the cross beam slot is tight and cannot turn. The other end of the threaded rod is fitted through the other cross beam, and the retaining nuts and the adjustment knob are attached. I use Loctite glue to fasten the nuts onto this end of the threaded rod, again important that these nuts are firmly glued to the threaded rod and can only turn together. Now need something for the top platform. You could use plywood or whatever, but better to have something robust against liquids in case of spills. 
I had an old piece of perspex on hand, which fits the bill nicely. After cutting the old perspex sheet to be symmetrical and rounding off the corners with a file, I clamped the perspex sheet to the lab jack in its final position, so I could drill the attachment holes. This way, you cannot make a mistake with the alignment of the holes in the perspex and the support beams of the lab jack. Final job is to simply screw in the self-tapping screws to attach the platform to the base. Well, that's it for the wooden version of the lab jack. If you found this useful, I would appreciate if you could take the time to like, comment and or subscribe. As I said, this is the first in a series of documenting the design and making of various homemade lab equipment. I've already completed a number of these items, with the next video ready for upload about retort stands, boss heads and clamps, both 3D printed and wooden versions. So make sure to subscribe and click the bell to be notified when they become available.